Well, I've been doing a bit of painting. That's the back guard to stop Swarf going all over the wall. Um, and that is the emergency stop bar, which you can put your foot on. Of course, I'm perfectly aware that as soon as hot Swarf starts hitting this metal thing, it's going to go back to... Uh, raw bare metal but it needed painting anyway so I painted it. The apron is quite heavy you just have to put blocks of wood under it to get it up to the right height and then engage the four bolts that uh, fix it to the saddle. Then you can just slide in one by one the three shafts that uh, control the threading and the feed like that and finally you put the bracket on the right hand end and then everything is wonderful. This bush which sits inside the torque limiting clutch um, it's obviously uh, totally rusted so I made another one out of 316. It turned out 0.2 of a millimetre thicker and that'll just have to do because it's difficult to put it back in the chuck to um, skim that, face that off. So I'm not totally sure whether this goes in that way with the chamfer on the outside or whether it goes that way. But my th reasoning is, and I can't tell from the parts diagram, my reasoning is that the chamfer on that in that way would be pointless because it's not actually it seems to be doing anything that, that looks more reasonable to me so I'm going to do it like that and then I'm going to put a little grease well we'll have a little grease on there too to keep that in but the main point is The main point is I want to put these two ball bearings in here and they won't stay without a bit of grease and it doesn't seem any harm to have some grease so I'll put one there and one there hopefully they will stay in long enough for me to be able to to apply this over here right so now I can put the two screws in Now we have to tighten this in such a way this is effectively tightening well a set of discs but, but they act as springs. And we don't know how much we need to tighten them in order to establish a certain release torque. But um, Well, I have no idea what the release torque on that is now, but uh, at least it's going to drive these things correctly. I should say that these uh, torque limiting clutches um, are not lubricated from the oil in this gearbox. I mean this one, the more modern one, has actually got an oil seal here, and uh, nor do they have any oiling points. Um, I mean you could apply oil directly to the shafts that will go in here but um, so it seemed perfectly reasonable to me to grease those ball bearings. I suppose one way of setting these torque limiting things properly is to set the springs fairly loose to start off with and then try some test cuts and test threading 
and if the clutches start slipping then tighten them up a bit until you reach an optimal setting. I'm having a slight problem in the electrical box getting the adjustment for the forward and reverse control, electrical control, uh, to work correctly. This half moon shape thing is controlled by a knob on the apron. The knob we're operating is this one to go in one direction or the other direction. And it's supposed to in operate this micro switch or that micro switch, depending on which way you put it. So if, if I put it into this position and you listen, you can hear the switch operate there. So that's working okay. But if I put it back into neutral, put it down here. It's not quite operating that switch. I wanted to do that, but it's not doing that. Now there's a reason for that. Now the problem is that there's slop in this the engagement of this bush onto this square shaft and uh, I guess that that slop is intentional but given the amount of slop I actually need more movement, more rotational movement than is permitted by this thing and that is controlled by this thing which engages that's neutral one direction or the other direction and I was thinking since this um, knob can go further down without hitting the bottom of the uh, swarf tray, top of the swarf tray, if I were to mill off a bit of this metal here, it would allow it to move further down, which would solve the problem. Now there is an adjustment here, whereby you can change the length of this shaft which is the thing that ultimately operates the, that uh, half moon shape thing. Um, I've adjusted this quite carefully. It's very difficult to adjust. Um, the other end of this rod is uh, in here and it's stupendously difficult to access. I can't actually see it at all because I can't get my head in there but uh, I can put a, a mobile phone in there and take a photograph of it. But you can see adjustment of that is very tricky. And I've been fiddling with it, but uh, my feeling is that I cannot adjust this any better than it is already set. I think alteration of the length of this rod just slightly changes the orientation of that half moon cam without actually changing the total angle through which it moves as the lever is operated. So it doesn't really solve my problem. So I'm just going to mill a bit away from this by going, uh, moving the workpiece that direction. Well that didn't quite work. Uh, because uh, that material turns out to be stupendously hard so I had to swap for a solid carbide end mill which cut it okay. So that's the bit I've cut away and I haven't calculated it in any sensible way I've just done it an arbitrary amount and we'll see what effect that has. hope it's not too much. So now Work. That used to work before, now this works as well. And I've still got plenty of clearance here. So I think that's alright. 
Of course, I shouldn't have had to make that modification. It must have worked before, and I'm not quite sure why it doesn't work now. But anyway, I've solved it that way. The board to which the microswitches are mounted is secured in position by these three black screws which engage with a metal plate which is behind the shiny one with Pratt Electrics written on it. Um, it is possible by loosening those three screws to fiddle with the orientation of the microswitches in space. But be careful not to undo all the screws at once, otherwise that metal plate at the back will fall down and you'll have some difficulty getting it back again. I was just thinking that Pratt Electrics may be appropriately named in view of the difficulty of adjusting these microswitches. But then I noticed it says Pratt Electrics L dot T dot D dot, whereas LTD is an abbreviation of a single word limited. Whoever wrote that label didn't realise that. Separately, I was wondering what the role of these two holes was. The obvious function is that this pin uh, that's attached to the lever should engage in those holes, thereby locking the lever either in the up or the down position. But on my lathe, uh, that engagement does not occur because the pin is actually fatter than the hole. And I don't know whether that's because the pin has been replaced or what. If you've got an M300, let me know in the comments whether that pin is supposed to engage when the lever is up or down. Well, that's all I've got for you this week. Uh, short rations, I'm afraid. As you can see behind me, I've got three-phase uh, outlets installed, but they're not live yet. The uh, uh, installation of three-phase to my property was scheduled for the 22nd of July, which is in two days' time, um, was cancelled because of Storm Eunice. Uh, SSE networks needed every available linesman to repair and restore electricity supplies to all those people who had been cut off. So um, uh, this is a map uh, from uh, SSE Power Track, which shows in red the areas where power outages have occurred in southern England, in their area at any rate. Slightly exaggerates the impact of the cut power cuts actually. I, I have had uh, four very brief off and on incidents. Uh, the only problem with that is that it upsets my PC, but um, mainly I've had power all the time. Uh, anyway, thanks very much for watching.